previously on the Block NZ Villa Wars. The battle of the outdoor bling commenced. Not only do we have the biggest deck, but we've got the biggest loot tech as well. Five burner, it's got like two side burners. I'm really liking that one there. Yeah, fantastic. And some harsh judging. I don't know how you can get it so wrong. You actually this. Tonight, yeah. big barbecues. I don't think I've ever seen a barbie that big before. Outdoor televisions. I suppose when you don't have a big deck, you gotta compensate in other ways. <laughs> Fire pits. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and vegetable faces. Good thing I had heaps of practice playing with my food as a kid. And in an outdoor room reveal, the game changer does exactly what the name promises. You can play your plus one. Oh my God. With heartbreaking consequences. If you would like advice on how to ensure your car, your home, and your contents, talk to AMP or your advisor today. AMP's getting behind the Block NZ Villa Wars. Three forty-five. It's time for a minute to get a bit. The worst thing is that it looks like we've done no progress. It looks the same as before. <laughs> More painting. More painting. Get your paint on the house yesterday. Don't have a job with that bloody hell. Kath decided to join us. Hey. Here she is. Straight into it, girl. I think I know why we're the only ones that don't finish very often. What is that? Because people obviously don't pay very much attention to detail. Hmm, Kat and Jeremy? Cheese. And there was also no screws on the bottom of the wardrobe handles. Hmm, Kat and Jeremy? There was also no door. This week, I've dangled a rather large incentive in front of our teams. A juicy carrot of $20,000 cash. All they have to do is produce the best outdoor entertaining room, and that's 5K. We tried to just stick with the reds and the whites. I've put in a little bit of mauve. It looks even better than I thought. To get the other 15,000, they must finish their guest bedrooms. No judging, they just have to get it done. Well, everything's painted. But that. So we're just going to work on the bay windows today. For houses one and two, the job should be simple. They inherited finished guest rooms from week one. Fudge for breakfast. I've been up for four hours, so technically I'm having fudge for lunch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brooke and Mitch at the end of the day did decide to move houses. They must be happy with their house, and so therefore it shouldn't matter that they have to start from scratch. At least this room's nearly all big. I'll just try to paint the room, eh? Put a firework in there and just go... Now we'll be done. Cat's exploding paint firework may be to blame, as Jamie and Hayden are finding their inheritance was not all it promised to be. Over the last week, we've actually encountered a few issues in regards to this room. It was a winning room in week one. However, a couple of PowerPoints weren't live at all. Some of the wires in the wall led to nowhere. Do you just shut, like, jam it in here? Also, our sash windows were nailed closed. None of them had been prepped, so all the paint was peeling off them. As always, there's a dedicated week for touch-ups. But I think the frustration here comes from fixing someone else's shortcuts. No wonder we don't finish on time, because we don't try and take shortcuts. It's what didn't go on the walls in Villa 1 in Villa 2, it's what did. Last night, we each had four hours sleep. We did make a lot of progress, but it doesn't look like it because there was a lot of prep involved. The worst thing is that we've uncovered a problem. Brooke and Mitch had wallpaper in their guest bedroom, um, and though we removed it some weeks ago, we sanded back all of the glue, primed it, spot primed it, spot sanded it, spot filled it, and now it turns out apparently the glue's still there. As soon as you paint it, this is what happens. 
With the girls in house two struggling with puckering paint... <sighs> life on the block. It's the boys that have been met with the greatest challenge this week. A contest of manhood. Real arrogant, eh? Got the one with an extra burner than the one Hayden got. <laughs> I was like, which one did he get? And like, that one, the four burner one? And I was like, oh yeah, I'll take the five. <laughs> I've got a six burner barbecue. Bigger is better. And while Mitch and Hayden competed valiantly, they both knew the biggest and manliest barbecue was always heading to Villa 3. Go on my way to get me barbie. Get your barbie? Weighs about 10 tonne. 10 tonne. You want to give us a hand? So our barbie's turned up. Um, it's massive. It's huge. It's going to take a few of us to lift it in. It's a pretty big box, man. I don't think I've ever seen a barbie that big before. That's 155 kgs. What? I think that's what it said on the box, is it? I hope he doesn't think I'm rubbing it in his face, but just showing off how big our Barbie is. <laughs> no, Jeremy. I think this is the very definition of rubbing someone's nose in it. Yeah, I got nothing else I could be doing, eh? <laughs> You're a great guy, bud. You're making Mitch do a barbecue walk yeah. of shame. <laughs> Maybe three on each side. The good news is it's already assembled. That's great. That's why it's so heavy. I don't know if Mitch is jealous of the Barbie or not, but I know he's got a secret weapon up his sleeve this week as well, so it's sort of tit for tat, you know, like he's doing something big and we're doing something big and so can go the biggest. Cheers for the help. Give us a yell if you need a lift any time. Yeah, yeah, we've got something heavy to hang on a wall later, so <laughs> we'll need you. Sweet as. The man and me can't resist. I need to see that barbecue. I think it's time for Shelly and me to check it out. And those other so-called secret weapons. And I think we'll start at the rich end of the block and work our way down. Brook and Mitch. Wow, they're making great progress. They're nearly finished. They sure are. And look at that beautiful ceiling. It actually looks original, which means they've restored it. Well, I know they've got the money. They are flush. It's obscene. I might ask them for a loan while we're here, actually. <laughs> Hello. Hello. This is different, isn't it? It sure is. Mm. You do have the logistical issues of being quite separate from the house. Yeah. Yeah, so we've definitely gone... We've got a table. A table and yeah. chairs, so yeah. it's a dining room. But then we're also bringing in an outdoor television. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> an outdoor television. I'm seriously excited right now. You mean there are such things as outdoor TVs? There is such thing as a, it's encapsulated in glass and weather sealed, and it's um, it's an outdoor television. Wow. You might have to buy this house, Mark. <laughs> I think our expensive items in our outdoor area will definitely give us the edge. And on the floor, we're having large grey pavers and a dining table in the centre. Along our timber feature wall, we're having a living garden with about 56 plants. We're also installing a waterproof television that's going to be attached to the Louvertec roofing. And also I want to get a big built-in barbecue, the biggest one we can afford. If you were to win again, would it be embarrassing? <laughs> uh, would you be just a little embarrassed? It'd be a little bit awkward. Right. Yeah, four in a row would be awesome. Um, I don't think we're banking on it, but hey, we'll give it a go. I've given it to you with the TV. <laughs> Ten. If only Ten. you were a judge, right? Ten. <laughs> G'day, Kit. Jeremy? How's it going? Wow, Shelley, are we on the block or are we on MasterChef? Look at the state of that barbecue. That barbecue is mean. It's quite bad, It is it? mean. <laughs> Do you think you're going to get finished two rooms this week? Yeah, well, one room, our guest bedroom, is pretty much finished. We had a big night last night painting and just making sure we tick that box and get that one done. Mm. What would you do with that 15k if you win it tomorrow? Just we, not touch it? <laughs> yeah, bank it, please. Yeah. Yeah. Stick it on the bank for a rainy day. $15,000 will keep us alive in the competition. Uh, the budget's sort of being stretched out as far as it can go at the moment, and $15,000 is going to make it um, possible for us to do the things we really want to do. Hello. Quality Hi. control Howdy. call. Oh, there's nothing but quality here. <laughs> How's it going? Hearing bone. I love the look of it. How much does it cost you? It might have cost us an extra couple of hundred, um, but it makes us different from the rest of the houses, and that's what we want. And you do have a difference from the rest of the houses because you've got a really big space out here, and that is such a bonus. This is 
probably going to be the biggest selling point for uh, the house. So nailing this part of the house is um, the most important thing to me. We get some really good advice from Mark and Shelley, more reinforcement that we're doing the right things. Um, so it's a big turnaround from, from last week. As you walk out onto our deck, you'll see a single herringbone arrow along the deck and up the left-hand wall. You're also going to see a massive barbecue. In the middle of the deck, we're going to have a dining table and chairs, which we intend to mirror with our dining area inside. Sarah Manan. Hi. I'd like Hi. to see your painting. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it a happy Friday? Is it a happy Friday? Is it a Friday that's on Progress Friday? We've run into a wall in the guest bedroom. It's horrific. We need to fix it. The, the problem is actually the glue that's um, stuck on from Brooke and Mitch's wallpaper. Can it be sanded out? We sanded it, it out completely. completely. Perfectly smooth until you add the paint. Pins to you got to cover that up. Yeah, we do. Remember, it's not going to be judged. It just has to be finished. Yeah. Yeah. There is no way we are not going to finish a room this week because that's so important and we need the money. I can tell you now, if they don't get that wall painted or the paint looks like this, there is no way I can judge their room to be finished. The teams are five days into building their outdoor entertainment rooms and have one full day left before they hand them over to our judges. Maybe a little higher on the priority list for Sarah and Vinan is finding a quick solution to the peeling paint in their guest bedroom. Morning. Run into a problem. Do you want to come have a look? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Step over here. We removed this wallpaper um, and we sanded it down. And it feels pretty smooth. But when you paint on it, there it is. Man, is there an issue in that room as well? I think essentially what's happening is that the sealer coat there's still enough residue of the, the wallpaper adhesive that it's the silicone is now stuck to the wallpaper adhesive. When you add moisture, i.e. paint, to that surface, it's then basically delaminating and, and puckering like this. <laughs> we should have just painted over the wallpaper. Yes, but you weren't to know that. You might win five grand outside, but you could lose 15 here. So to me, it's a no-brainer. This has got to become your priority now. I'm not planning on losing $15,000 over this. The only way that I can think of solving the problem is to scrape off what paint that they've already put on and then apply a coat of pigmented sealer. That will seal the entire surface and then they can paint over that. But pigmented sealer takes 12 hours to dry. You know, it's one little wall. When you consider everything you've painted, this is easy now. It's a straightforward fix. Coat of sealer, two top coats, problem solved. But right now, I think that she thinks that's it, it's game over. With the girls stuck fixing problems inside, the procession of outdoor entertainment bling marches on. Uh, everyone just talk to each other so we're all on the same page. Me, Mikey and another Mitch and Jason the Sparky's uh, giving me a hand to manoeuvre this television out. Yes, it's time to install the hotly anticipated outdoor television. I'll say that when it goes up out there, there might be some heads turn. I think everyone wants an outdoor TV. Is, he, is your bottom in? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, come on. Oh, look at that. Looks like they might be putting a TV up. <laughs> now, is it centre? You need to go that way, not Jay. I suppose when you don't have a big deck, you got to compensate in other ways. But the neighbourly tension generated by Brook and Mitch's outdoor tech isn't just confined to the boys. It's encapsulated in glass. So Sarah yells over and um, she notices our TV and is interested to see whether it's like watertight and all that sort of stuff. I can't believe it, I can really afford a football TV. <laughs> yeah, like usual, it's kind of like a fake conversation. We paid one and a half for our barbecue. Thousands. You're winning too many damn challenges. Ha <laughs> ha. Whatever. Then she says, oh, you know, you guys are so loaded. We're actually not loaded, and so many people say that we are. They've won three weeks in a row, they're not, you know, short on cash. They're filthy rich. They're rolling in it. <laughs> the reason we actually have money is because we do ourselves. The wealthy Brooke and Mitch have no idea how the other half live. And all they have to do is look across the backyard to see how bad their needy neighbours actually have it. It's quite annoying because we 
removed the um, wallpaper with a proper wallpaper steamer and then we've had it sanded and undercoated since then and it still looks like that, so great. House 2's paint problems have had a diagnosis from the wolf, but Sarah is in search of a cheaper and faster second opinion. Dale, do you recommend I try and spend all that time re-prepping the wall or do you reckon we just cover it? It's not gripping onto the paint at all. So Pete just painted that so you can see that it just rubs right off. Yep. So see if you can get a wallpaper. Get a really basic, the most basic wallpaper you can get, slap it up and paint over the top. You reckon? Why not? Paint over, paint over the top. With two different solutions tabled, now the girls have to make a decision. Go with the advice of either their builder and paper over it, or their foreman and paint it. To me, it's a no-brainer. Outside, the decisions are all about going one better than the team next door. And Villa 3 hasn't stopped with their beast of a barbecue. It's like 9, 7, 9, 8, cut 4 at 9, 18. The idea of the firebox, sort of a, an object that you can sit around and eat as well. We've got our dining room right next door to it, and the bifold doors open right out onto the deck. We really want to just create a space that you can have a meal around, you can fit your plates on there, but you're also around the fire, and it's a good social point. As you walk out onto the deck in the right corner, you'll see an outdoor sofa where you can sit and relax in front of our lovely guest fire pit, which will have an extra wide surround. And to the left of that, there will be some box seating. Next to that, you'll step down into the outside kitchen area with our massive barbecue. Super confident about all the measurements. I've got my right hand man Nick on the job. We're double checking each other. So, yeah, if it all goes wrong, we'll just blame him. Just got to get it done before tools down. With the pursuit of one upmanship in full swing, what better time to rally the troops for a wee impromptu challenge? Everyone outside, please. Outside in what is still the communal area. Oh, that's my backyard, Mark. Not yet, really, is it? Hearing Mark's voice on a Friday afternoon is like hearing nails down a blackboard. Hello, everyone. Guess what time it is? You know, it's tools down at 6 o'clock, so it's like, oh, not convenient. Well, these outdoor entertaining areas are starting to look really flash. It's a good thing placemakers came to the rescue with the decking timber, isn't it? <laughs> Given the state of your budgets. Yeah. When these are complete, they're going to be the perfect place for throwing a party. And what's the key to a good party? Oh, oh, oh I know. Good food. It is, actually. It's host responsibility. What does a good host provide? Good, healthy food. Healthy? Healthy food. I want you to create a fruit and vegetable platter. So it's a rotten fruit. <laughs> ah. But not just any old fruit and vegetable platter. Your fruit and vegetable platter must be a portrait of your team member. I'm thinking, how the hell are we going to do this? I've never done anything like this before. I wonder if we have any Michael Tangelos or Pablo Picassos <laughs> amongst oh, us. No. Now, I know you're all Baroque and could do with some Monet, <laughs> but I've handed <laughs> out... Don't look at me like that, though. <laughs> they were clever puns. Mark thinks he's really funny. <laughs> and, yeah. He's quite funny. I, I like the puns. I've handed out enough money, OK? I know you need plenty of it. But the prize up for grabs today, instead of more money, is an hour of free labour from the team that comes last. You can make them do any old crappy job you like, except for painting. So I'd suggest in this challenge, if you don't want to be the free labour, you do a surreally good job. Oh, <laughs> You know, that's one hour you could be painting your house, one hour you could be doing all sorts of things, especially doing it for another team as well. It's just, uh, you don't want to be doing that. You've got ten minutes. <laughs> decide who it's going to be, and then into it. Sarah and I decide that I'll do this challenge only because she was in the middle of painting and I was in between jobs. Jamie's got things to do. I'm going to send her on her way, and then I'm going to bang this out as quickly as possible. Kent's not even here. She's out shopping. She somehow managed to slip out and weasel out of this one, so I'm going to be representing. We just sort of thought that Mitch could do something creative with my curly hair or something. All right, you got ten minutes. Let's go. All right. We're hurt. I look forward to seeing me. Let us begin. Oh, I like that, Mitch. 
So how many design a portrait from fruit and veg? Oh, you got 10 minutes to do it. You just got to start and roll with it, I think. There's no method to this madness. It's just 10 minutes, eh? I see the parsnip there and I'm like, oh, it's white. It's kind of like blonde, you know? It's Brooks here. And then might just go a bit comical with it and make the features a bit hilarious. What's the challenge? To make it actually look like them or can you just make them look like a dog? Yeah, I start dropping up some carrot and I think I could maybe create some lips out of the carrots. Quickly gave up on that idea. It wasn't really carving the carrot like I thought I could. It's amazing the amount of things you can do with a carrot. You can do a lot of things with vegetables, but uh, making faces out of them is a first for me. Strategy going into this challenge is to get the hair right. Sarah's all hair and pretty much no body, and so I'm just going hard on the hair and create the body later. Oh, I love it. I love the technique. The resemblance is so uncanny at the moment. I mean, I just did not think, you know, it'd be this easy, but... Brooke's just looking real cute. She woke up like that. Yeah. It's been five minutes, so five to go. Looking around, everyone's kind of just doing a head, um, focusing on the face, so I'm thinking that maybe if I go full body, it's a little bit different. Good thing I had heaps of practice playing with my food as a kid. Throw it on the plate and then just move it all around. And I use the beans and sort of wrap them around the shape of the face. Yeah, just try to make it kind of look like it, her hair is sort of waving and a bit tattered. One minute to go, guys. Get a leg, you mon. No, they would laugh or cry at that one. A minute to go, and I'm pretty much finished. I just decide to make some more hair. Why not? She's got really thick hair. At the moment, I'm kind of finished with a minute to go. Just want to maybe add some final features, so I just start throwing a bit more vegetables in the hair, just to fill it out a little bit. Looking over at Mitch, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to beat him and come in at third, which is exactly what I'm trying to do. I don't think I'll win, but I don't think I'll lose either. Ten. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Knives down. Your rosary and time is up. Yeah, that one was that one was alright. With a plus one on the line, <laughs> which of these pretty produce portraits will be my pick of the bunch? Give me veg, give me veg, give me vegetables. You can cook them any way you please. Who will be tasting sweet, sweet victory? Who will be left with sour grapes? Will it be Silver Beach Sarah? Beanie Brook? Juicy Jamie? Or Carroty Cat? Mitch. So this is Brooke, is it? Yeah. Can't tell. I think she's holding herself together a bit better than that, to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. in the last five weeks. She's not looking that frazzled. No. Even on her worst day ever, I don't think she'd look that frazzled, would she? Just trying to make sure, you know, get her five plus a day. Manette, not bad, Manette. Thanks, Mark. Not bad, you've gone for the whole body. <laughs> yeah, it's I have. It's about as tall as Sarah as it well. Is. Yeah. It actually does, and I hope she takes this the right way. It does look a little bit like Sarah, doesn't it? I thought it was real cute. Sarah's kind of cute. Yep, <laughs> yep. Well done. Right, Jeremy. Yep. It's actually good work, isn't it? You've captured Cat's hair quite nicely, I think, yeah. albeit green. I think the lips are very good, and the eyes, you've fantastic work on the eyes. Cheers. Hayden, I like what you've done with the mushroom being the skin colour. A little bit blotchy, but I'm sure a bit of makeup will deal to that. The eyes look a little bit like uh, Jamie's eyes looked last Saturday. Tired eyes, tired a little bit red. Okay, well done. So I think in 10 minutes you've all done really well and created something that resembles a face. So, on the basis of quality of work and resemblance, Mitch, you and Brooke will be providing an hour of free labour, I'm afraid. I expected that. Two. Cat and Jeremy. Yes, I'm stoked. I uh, haven't won this one yet. Uh, the one point as well, that's huge. Plus one to you. Brilliant. Congratulations. Thank you, you can very choose much. the labour whenever you like. Remember, it cannot be painting. We come in last place. It's a pain in the ass. Um, we don't want Kat and Jeremy to have a plus one, and I don't really want to spend an hour working on their house. Kat and Jeremy are the worst people that can win a plus one. It's so tight now, and if, if it comes down to you know one point, we're definitely going to try and win and use it strategically. Kitty, <laughs> I prepared you a meal. Oh. <laughs> this is so good. It looks exactly like me. 
This bad boy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could come down at one point this week. Yeah. But if it was like down to like us and Sarah Manan or us and Jamie and Hayden, it will be so tough. You can eat your face. It's a nice healthy meal for you. Yeah, I'll have a nibble on my face. Uh -huh. Oh, oh! Ah! My face! <laughs> Kat and Jeremy may be walking away with a game changer, but I'll let you in on not a little secret, but a rather big secret. For one of these beautiful young ladies, a big life changer of a moment is just around the corner. But that big decision is for another day. Out the back of house three, Jeremy has a very different kind of proposal for Mitch. What are you doing? Some plumbing or something? You got the tools to do some plumbing. I'd rather do some plumbing than anything else. So we've won this challenge and we've got an hour's work from Brooke and Mitch. Um, definitely want to put Mitch to good use. Um, we know he's a qualified plumber. He said any time of the day, eh? Any time? Yeah. Yeah. You think two o'clock on a Friday's a bad time to request some work? The hour long massage would be quite key, eh? Yeah, Brooke looks like she's got strong fingers. Yeah, any type of work, eh? Mitch in there plumbing up the toilet and Brooke out there on the deck just giving us a message. Yeah. <laughs> Careful, guys. As the beginning of the week proved, and you two also got a zero. Brooke and Mitch are one team you don't want to get offside with. You got 22. You win. We started the war. All of the teams have decided to fabricate the walls of their outdoor rooms using privacy screens. Mitch has nipped out to make sure House 4's custom design was exactly what they envisioned. They take me out to the sort of water cutting area and they're going to fire up the machine and show me one of my panels getting cut, which is, is quite, going to be quite exciting, I think. While Mitch enjoys the show, back at the block, Brooke is a bit more hands-on. I'm terrible at putting furniture together. What the hell are those? God damn it. I might not offer the judges a seat tomorrow. I probably get a zero for it when they fall off. Assembly is one issue, but for Hayden, the trouble is, wait for it. Our Freedom Furniture, although it's great, is a little bit too dark. Words I never thought we'd hear. So um, I'm sanding back all of the stain that's currently on there. For reveal, it'll be raw timber, and we'll try and get a light stain on it later. To be honest, it's all about the look for us this weekend, and we just want to make sure that we don't have too much of a uh, contrast between our, our decking timber and our furniture. Ocean Weave furniture has come in, um, and I haven't seen it before because my nan picked it, but I'm so excited. What's in here? Wait a <laughs> No, we're not waiting for her. She, she went and picked it, so it's my turn to have a look. Good deal. That is so sweet. Well, it's time you put your scatter cushions on it. Yeah, yeah, we've got them. It's lovely designer furniture. It's worth $6,000 we might have spent, so yeah, we've got a little bit left over for Backyard Week. Um, I hope it wows the judges. The wow factor on Villa 3's deck is Kat and Jeremy's custom-built fire pit come coffee table. We're just talking then about whether we're chucking on casters though, eh? Really? I can get some lockable ones. Hmm. This is going to be too heavy, is it? Yeah, you won't be able to shift it, eh? And I think you will need to be able to move it. Nick, one of the Taranaki boys who come up for the week, suggested that we have caster wheels on the bottom. We initially sort of flogged the idea off and were like, nah, mate, no, we're not going to do that. But now that the box is being framed out and it's quite heavy, we thought we're starting to lean towards, yeah, maybe it is a good, good idea to be able to just move it around and if it rains, you can bring it in underneath the louvers. How about we use the casters on the sink? Yeah, man, that's, that can definitely work. That's genius. Yeah, they're not going to dent or anything? No. Oh, mate. So each one of these is about 35 bucks. We just saved ourselves over $100. Just worked out perfect. You can still use that. Yeah, I'd, I probably would never have that on casters anyway. While Villa 3 get a roll on, there's also been some traction made remedying Sarah and Manan's paint trouble. But have they taken the wolf's advice? 
I've just um, left a message for someone at Dulux. I know a reasonable amount about painting, but I just wanted to check. So they're going to call me back in a few minutes and then we'll have an answer. So, you know, I reckon it'll be Piggy Sealer. Oh, um, while you've gone and done that, yep. I've actually sliced out a wallpaper hanger um, and she said that she can actually squeeze us in for today. I'm thinking by the time you drive, get wallpaper, spend some time deciding wallpaper, which to be honest could be like an hour, hour and a half. You could have painted it in that time and job done. And they're going to have to pay someone to wallpaper. It's going to be paying a few hundreds to uh, get the wallpaper wall up um, versus potentially losing 15000 for not finishing. The main thing is in the end they've weighed up both options and it seems like they're going to go down the wallpaper path. I just hope it works for them. And with $15,000 on the line, the girls cannot afford to get this choice wrong. It's Friday afternoon, and the block is abuzz with activity inside and out. And while the teams are concentrating on completing this week's outdoor room, Pete has seized the opportunity to add a little future-proofing to the insides of these old villas. Look, all we're doing today is we're just pre-wiring um, this house for a future solar photovoltaic system. And if uh, they choose to go ahead with the solar system, uh, we're ready, all ready to go. The wire's here. It's just a matter of connecting it up on the roof. That's another added feature to the house, another selling point. Pretty incredible addition. It's the more immediate future Sarah and Vinan are concerned with, and completing their guest bedroom to get their hands on the 15K. Dulux have come to the rescue and solved the girls' peeling paint problem with a paintable wallpaper. And with the blinds going in, Sarah and Vinan are creeping ever closer to knocking off this very valuable space. An hour and a half into tools down and I'm feeling, all right, we're going to finish our guest bedroom, so that's OK. Going over the wolf's head may have been a smart move, but the wolf will put it down to... They've had a very lucky day, I think. <laughs> Block Fridays are, in a way, like trying to put a rather large puzzle together. Looking good. It's going to be good, isn't it? Yeah. The teams know what the end picture is supposed to look like, they think they've got all the pieces. Should we drop it in and just see if it fits? Now it's about making sure it all comes together. Yeah, that'll be awesome. It's just another cool feature that we're going to add, something different that the other teams don't have. Sometimes you think you've got the right piece, but it doesn't quite fit. That's a real Doris move. Yeah, just a bit, eh? The Sparkies have put in some outdoor plugs for the bench unit, so you can plug in the rotisserie for that, you can plug in any extra fairy lights, whatever you want to do in here. Just when to open the barbecue, you stand the classic Friday itis, it's about like five mil to the left too much. So when you open the barbecue lid, it hits the plugs. Any other day of the week, you would have got away with it. Easy fix. It's just screwed into things, so you just unscrew the faceplate, move it across, screw the faceplate back on. Okay, we're gonna leave before they found it. But Mitch isn't the only one making Doris moves. I stand corrected. It wasn't a Doris move at all. It looks wicked. It's very modern. Modern and Thanks, timeless. Mitch. Triangles. What an Thanks, timeless. Mitch. Oh, that's quite a compliment from old Mitch. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brooks, like, who are you? I take that compliment and keep it. Lock it, lock it down. Mitch's compliments aren't the only thing that's flowing. Yes, I've painted the floor. At least it's not on the deck. Ooh, <laughs> imagine that. Everybody would have killed me, including Marty. Ooh. I probably would have quit the block. I went to shake the paint and little did I realise that I didn't put the lid on properly. It's always the little things on the Friday that tend to push you back, like paint being dropped on the floor. Jamie may be making more work for herself, but with the 6pm tradie curfew approaching, Jeremy's crew of Mackie builders have produced the goods 
Their fire pit centrepiece is near complete. Looks fresh. Fresh. Fresh to death. Yeah, it's pretty fresh. Check out the fresh house. Yeah. <laughs> pretty fresh. Yeah. And are now taking in the fruits of their labour. We've got about an hour and 15 to go. Josh is just siliconing in the um, tiles. Nice, Joshy. I know we're going to get slammed for this white silicon now, eh? It's eating me. I just finished putting some white silicon in, and it's not the right colour. If we had grey hair right now, I'd scrape it out and redo it. What did you say? I saw some grey stuff in there. This little cat took it back. Cheers. Yeah, that's good. Better than white, eh? Yeah. We've managed to find a tube of grey silicon. We've got less than an hour to tools down. What are you doing? I'm replacing all the silicon now that I've just finished and wiped into grey. <laughs> nah, don't. <laughs> right, that's all the motivation I need. Thanks, brother. It's about as risky as it gets. We're going to give it a crack, mate. That's it. <laughs> just do this. Perfectionist, mate. I won't be able to sleep a weekend if I don't try. So we'll see what happens. Way better, eh? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Gonna take long? Six o'clock's coming around. Can't look back, gotta look forward. Yeah, that's it, definitely better. The Taranaki hardcore aren't the only ones going hard. With less than half an hour till tools down, the block orchestra is building to its crescendo. Out here we have a ridiculous amount to do. Oh, mate, look at this sunset, eh? Seven minutes, we're gonna get it done. Maddie, just cut, cut that off there and take two, just two of those. <laughs> One of the downfalls of having the biggest deck is that there are little spots you might miss. There's a couple of little triangles missing and Marty's doing his best to fill that gap. Little white foot, I guess, eh? So there was a bit of a mad rush to the finish line. Tools down, six o'clock, Friday, tradies go home. Yeah, boy. Nice, Betty. Tools down, everyone. Nice and quiet. <laughs> it's the only time I've ever seen him wear earmuffs. Six o'clock on a Friday. It's just because it still is done. <laughs> Don't put the bummers in there, Jerry. Yeah, that's good, eh? That looks really cool. Comes the rain. One time. Just roll her under the louvers, eh? Yeah, I'm like stoked with how it turned out. At the start of the week, I knew I wanted to do something like that, um, but I didn't know whether it was going to be possible, whether it would have enough time. So to actually see it like come to fruition and actually happen, um, yeah, it was really exciting. Nice. In the nick of time? Just in the nick of time. Fantastic. All right, taxi. Taxi back to the nicky. Maybe. Charge it up to Jeremy. It's been great having the boys up, Josh and Nick from New Plymouth. I just really enjoyed having them here, and they've just they've done a solid um, week's work. Good luck, mate. Cheers, boys. No worries. Good stuff, man. It's the end of the working week for the tradies. Now the teams have just 16 hours to get their outdoor rooms and guest bedrooms finished for judging. And Hayden is employing some reverse psychology. Mate, how yeah. long did that take you? About 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> you guys have done an awesome job on the deck. Hope we win. Uh, we better win. <laughs> yeah, we better. <laughs> yeah, we need to go from zero to hero real quick. Every single week, I always say uh, at about 6.30 on a Friday evening that we're going to finish. That I've got 100% confidence, so I'm going to throw it out there that we're not going to finish this week. We're going to push ourselves as hard as we can, but I don't think we're going to finish. <laughs>
Jamie went to change the colour, and this is the grey she came up with. However, we're going a different grey. I guess I'm queen of indecisiveness. Tell us how um, you like to live life dangerously at one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I like to just like freehand doors on air in the morning without putting any protection down on the carpet. Round two of making this bed. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't take us as long. 6.45, we're still up, but we've managed to complete our guest bedroom. Every single week I've played the optimist on a Friday evening and said that we're going to finish. Last night I changed tactics and decided that I wasn't going to finish and that we were nowhere near finishing and it looks like we're going to finish early. What I've got left to do, got to clean that glass, hook up the gas bottle, take all the plastic off the furniture, just remembered, got to put some hinges on there. I reckon it just comes down to good planning and if you've got something to do, just do it. Don't around. This is potentially a $15,000 bed, and we've messed it up before. Oh my god. We have had experience making this particular bed. Why is this not fitting? That was not a two hour ordeal. We've come a long way on the block. Candelina wine mixer. How's it going, mate? I've got some gas for you. And this time last week, we were running around like headless chickens. We were. Yeah, you were painting carpets. No, I wasn't. That's gonna kill me. One hour to go! Oh my god. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, stop. Go. Kind of cooked it. I cut it short. Oh no, I, I actually left it like that for a reason. So you can get your finger in there. Da, na, na, na. Got nothing to tinker with today. Yes. Half an hour to go to get the furniture in place. This is one small step for the block. One giant feature for house three. Hold it for 10 seconds. There's definitely gas going into it. Mm. Did you get the right gas? Yeah, I got 91. 91 <laughs> in the gas bottle. Jamie, I'm really sorry. I'm, I don't know where I put the keys to. We're going to have to find them, though, eventually. Yeah, I know, James. Wait for it. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes to go. Looks good. We're finished. No, we're not. We need to start. Hopefully they don't eat it so I can eat it. Mm-hmm. Look who's back. How long has it been there? Yeah, I'm going to vacuum this uh, because I don't want to give anybody any reason to label the room unfinished. Hey, Kat, how about we open up this Louvertech and see what it's like with a bit of light on the deck? Might get wet. Ah, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. One minute to go! Just one minute with $20,000 on the line! Sarah, you know you've got tape around your window. Draining out my pants. Quite finished, but. Yeah. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Tools down. It's awesome. That's nice it. Yay. We finished two. Wow. She's going meow, meow. So try me in the morning. G'day, guys. Yo. Hello. Well done. You all finished your outdoor entertaining areas. 
and I personally think they're spectacular with the screens you've designed and those Louvertech roofs. But just before we get to who wins, there's the small matter of those guest bedrooms. We're pretty confident that we'll get the $15,000 for completing the guest bedroom because we made sure and double checked and triple checked that we've done everything right. I told you at the beginning of the week that I would give you back your budget if they were completed to my satisfaction by this morning. Well, I've been through all of them and I can say, house one. Congratulations, nice job. $15,000 will be in your account. Well done, nice. Thanks, Mark. Work. We needed that more than anything. Uh, we are so far behind that any anything helps, really. I don't want to keep shopping at the Sally's. House two. There appears to be a door missing on your guest bedroom. You gonna hate me for this? but there is no money for you. Oh my God. Until that door is put on. Oh, of course. <laughs> Monday morning. Yes, I suggest on Monday morning, you hang that $15,000 door. Yes, sir. <laughs> House three. There's a little bit of skirting missing and no cushions on the day bed. Do you want that $15,000? I suggest you complete your room pronto. All right? All right. It's not much to do. We have to have cushions, do we? Yes. All right. Mm. It's just more annoying than anything. It means yeah. we just can't pay our bills on Monday. I just wish we had fixed that bit of skirting on and tacked it there, whatever. Just pulled the wool over his eyes and we might have mm. been sweet. Get the room finished, and only then will you get your $15,000. I'm a man of my word, aren't I? You are. Yes. <laughs> House four. Do you guys think you're getting your $15,000? I don't know. I'm sure you'll find something. <laughs> I stayed up very late fitting hardware to make sure I didn't get pulled for anything like that, so... He didn't fit it very well. There's a door handle missing. Oh, not the front door. He's coming all the way from Invercargill. Well, it's a good thing then that you've got some spare cash to cover the bills while you wait for that door handle to arrive, isn't it? Yeah. When it's on and it's the right one, you'll get your money. Thanks. I'll give you until 10 a.m. Monday to get those bits done. All right. Who wants to find out what the judges thought of their outdoor entertaining areas? This year, outdoor rooms were first for the block, and you guys should be chuffed with what you've achieved. Because... An impressive outdoor area is a tick in any potential buyer's book. Now, all your designs were different, but only one can be judged the winner. Just really nervous. So we've kind of like had a few misses the last few weeks, so it really does knock your confidence. So mm. we don't really know where we sit with the judges anymore. And of course, to the best outdoor entertaining area, there's $5,000 from our mates from a &P to go towards your budget. All right, who wants to find out what the judges thought of their outdoor entertaining areas? Taking home the weekly cash prize for the best room will mean winning over our frontline style generals. Property expert, Bernadette Morrison. And interior designer, Jason Bonham. We're gonna start with you two, house two, Sarah and Manan. Cool. This week has been an emotional roller coaster for Sarah and Manan. I don't know how we're gonna finish. We can't win. And just when they thought they couldn't take any more, three, oh! they won. It feels amazing. It's so good. <laughs> Could definitely get used to this. And boy, did they need it. For our exterior colour, thinking of doing like a grey green. With a little confidence and a big cash incentive. Well, we will have that $15,000. Could the girls turn this into a winning week? Hey. Tools down. We finished two spaces.
we really want everything to be perfect today. Uh, we know that we don't have the most flashy, showy or impressive deck, so um, yeah, it's all in kind of how homely we can make it feel so that Jason and Bernadette can envision our space as their home. It's been nicely set up for you, Bernie. It has. It's got chocolate and strawberries. Let's sit down. <laughs> I do like this little space. It's lovely out here. I know they haven't used the whole of the deck, but um, to be honest, I think it's a little bit more intimate here. I like what they've done with these panels. I think the panels are quite lovely in terms of, you know, obviously a bit more open face to the top, and then obviously as it filters down, the privacy becomes more of a factor as they're facing the other house, which is quite good. Yeah. First impression was... Jason loved the salami, the platter was very well arranged, and the choice of dips was excellent. <laughs> Cherry oh. awesome. The actual first impression of your outdoor entertaining area was it was a great space, which flowed easily into the garden, and the geometric design on the panels was clever and added real interest. Yeah, all the time I spent on the panels was worth it, I think. For me personally, I, mean, I think the lighting is kind of decorative in a sense, but I'm not sure exactly how much light that's going to give long term. So I think I probably would have added a bit more lighting to the exterior of the space, to be honest. Just over the barbecue area and that type of thing? Exactly. While they liked the strip lights, they felt there wasn't enough over the barbecue and that could make it difficult to cook. Yeah, we'll be changing that out a little bit. Um, just left it a little bit late. <laughs> Well, once again, you know, the brief was that it had to be a practical, usable space. You know, feel like a little bit of an oasis. They've done it. Look at the look on your face eating that Absolutely. strawberry. Oh. There you go. And delicious. It's going button me up. Bring on Christmas. <laughs> Overall, they felt it was a nice, coordinated, practical space, and your choice of house colour made the area feel sophisticated. Oh, good. <laughs> and Jason said he would love a moussaka next week. <laughs> All right. Starting with Bernadette, scores. Sarah and Manan. Solid. Solid? Mm -hmm. You happy with that? Mm -hmm. Good comments though, could have expected a bit more. You know, I'm not disappointed in that, but um, yeah, i still hoping for more. Next up, House 4, Brooke and Mitch. For Mitch, the week started with birthday celebrations and neighbourly love. Happy birthday to you! But that didn't last for long. Brooke and Mitch, the wealthiest team on the block, decided to declare war. We wanted our $1,000 back. I think it's going to come back and bite them in the ass. Good luck finding your toolkit, Mitch. But they didn't let naughty neighbours distract them. They took their winning cash and splashed out. That looks beautiful. It looks even better than I thought. It'll be a full-blown come auction day. Hoping their living wall and outdoor TV will give them the edge to take out a record-breaking four-block wins in a row. We think we've got a pretty awesome room. Yeah, four in a row would be awesome. Um, I don't think we're banking on it, but... Hey, we'll give it a go. This is a nice outdoor space. What do you think? I really like it. Well, it's a little bit different too because it's away from the house, so it's more like a little bit of a man cave, really. You've got the TV for a start. I'm so pretty thirsty. <laughs> I was going to say, it's all about the food for Jason. The other thing I think that's really obvious here is I think the finishing here has been done really well. You know, the finishing of the wall, it's not dusty, it's well cleaned. Everything feels very nice, clean and well finished. First impression was they loved the pavers and all of the elements in the room had been beautifully built and finished to a high standard. You happy with the first comments from the judges? It's um, it's a good start. With the TV here too, if you're going to have a few people over and um, they are watching a sports match on TV or a movie, you've got some children here and they're watching a movie, you can sort of leave them out here and then you can go back into the house and get a little bit of separation, which is kind of clever. The space felt very comfortable and multi-purpose and it would be really easy to swap out the dining table with a comfy sofa for a movie night. I think the other thing to be aware of, you know, obviously once the, you know, the, the fencing goes in as well, that's going to be kind of a dark side of the, the sort of space through sure. here. And then with these new panels that have just gone in, I mean, I'm not really keen on that because it's blocking so much light. You know, it doesn't really feel like... It feel, for me, it feels too enclosed. They loved the TV and green wall 
but said it was a shame the design of the privacy screen blocked out a lot of the afternoon sun. I don't really want well, everyone in house to potentially being able to see that there's an $8,000 television hanging on the wall. The lighting's really nicely done. Great for the barbecues, we keep pointing out. And they've got the lighting above on the uprights as well, which is fantastic. Outdoor and your sound, outdoor speaker. Which is really great. Very resorty. So if they were looking for that sort of resort type feel, I think we've got it here. Overall, the judges said they admire your brave choices and that you created something different that was well thought out and could be used night and day. Eight. All right. Yeah. What, so, so. Mm. I thought we would have got a little bit higher than that. All right. Let's see what they had to say about house one. Jamie and Hayley, they're nervous there, Jamie. Just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Jamie and Hayden started the week with a strong design concept. Bigger is better. But their big budget blowout needed to be addressed. You are the first team in block history to run out of money at the halfway point. It's a record. <laughs> it's not the best record. Paint was spilt. At least it's not on the deck. Risky designs were finished and justice was served up barbecue style. I may or may not have put Mitch's barbecue instructions in the skip. Subtle sabotage is definitely the name of the game. And for the first time, they left nothing unfinished. It looks like we're gonna finish early. I don't know if we've got the best chance of winning just because everyone has put forward really high quality outdoor areas and we've been able to see them. Yeah, it's going to be a fierce competition because ours is just as good as twos, twos is just as good as threes, and so on and so forth. Oh, what a lovely outdoor room. So nice to see something like this outside now that the weather's cleared up as well, but weatherproof as well. The Louvertech's fantastic. I know, look at the width too and the length of it with the screen down the, down the end there to give it some, um, it's really good. some privacy. First impression was it was a nice, light, open space which felt extremely usable, and you nailed the brief this week. It was a relaxing oasis. I love our initial feedback. I made an absolute point at the beginning of the week of avoiding the brief. <laughs> and it paid off. It's a good turnaround, isn't it? Yeah. I was not expecting that. We will nail it. <laughs> Don't do that again. <laughs> I like what they've done with this decking here, this whole chevron pattern, the way it's designed. And if you look at the screen back there, you'll see that the screen, actually, the chevron pattern follows down, and then follows the whole direction all the way up. The chevron design was clever, and it made it so much more than just a boring old deck. Chevron? The hearing bone. Yeah, OK. Sorry I scolded you on that. Maybe we'll pay dividends. <laughs> It's kind of nice that there's only really seating for four, whereas I'd probably want seating for six to eight out here, being that it's such a lovely big outdoor room. Yes, but once again, like you say, you could put a huge table along here. This is going to be fantastic at Christmas time. Can you oh, imagine that? Fantastic. Flowing out to the garden, you've got your barbecue over here, you've got some storage in here by the looks of it. Nice and shady. Yeah, look at that. Fantastic. Bernadette said that the space would really add value to the house due to its sheer size and generous depth. Jason said he liked the uplights and the herringbone detail on the step, which added cohesion to the recessed wall in the living room. But. <laughs> yeah, there is a but, yeah. actually. But he thought that the built-in barbecue area could have been painted charcoal to give the space layering and break up the wood. He wants you to paint it black? Yeah, <laughs> He just told me he didn't want me to do any more black. Look at Hayden beaming. He's thinking, I'll get onto that this evening. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, we need to have words. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than last week. I mean, as I said last week, I thought I was going to burst into flames in that black room. So it's nice to see something a lot lighter and brighter, nicely kind of thought out. Overall, the judges said that it was a huge step up from last week and you have created a really comfortable space for eating and relaxing. Great job. Oh my god. Boom. That is wow. huge. I love you, Jason. <laughs> 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 Wait till you see Jason's scores first. Out there now.
Because well he done. might give us a seven for all you know. <laughs> it's just refreshing that our concepts can actually touch somebody and, and be translated. So. so stoked for them. Um, what a comeback. Proud of you. Still got another score to go, though. You should have won that one point. Finally, house three, Captain Jeremy. It was a bad start to the week for Captain Jeremy. Because you know I'm down two guys today. Really? For the whole week? Yeah, what are the chances of getting you and your few of your boys up here? So they phoned home and called in the big guns. The Taranaki Hardcore. A challenge win added to their arsenal. I was thinking maybe we could come and negotiate a deal about your barbecue. Everything's got its price, eh? <laughs> but they kept their prize and further boosted their firepower. Outdoor burner thingy majiggy. They're pinning their hopes on an original approach. The score is a bit different to everyone else's house. We chose to go with the colour Martin from the Dulux range for our um, weather boards. Yeah, it looks great. Mm. Cat and Jeremy. And with the game changer under their belts. Game changer. They have one more ace Yay. up their sleeve. I think this area is capable of a win. You know, we, we created spaces and we added on, and I think it's a real functional space, and hopefully the judges can see that. Oh, the cheese looks delicious. Look at that. Or better quality than the other one as well. Well, I think that if, we go, if they feed you, Jason, you're going to be nice to them. <laughs> This fire pit's really nice, but I mean, safety-wise, I would have probably had some glass installed around here. Overall, I feel like they've done a really superb job here. Even the coordination of the decking against the house colours, the heritage-type building with the modernity of the screens, overall very nicely and very well put together. Yeah, I agree. First impressions were they love the use of heritage colours and how they blended with the modern design of the privacy screen. So, yeah, to hear that um, our exterior paint colour is up their alley and they, they like it uh, is great because the whole place is getting painted in that colour. I love that barbecue. Oh, it's massive. I love the play on all the levels. You know, we've got a nice little seating area there. It feels very coordinated and they've really thought well about how the space is actually going to be used. Yeah. So I'm, I feel very comfortable here. The space felt interesting and they liked the different levels and seating areas. The whitewashed effect on the deck softened the wood and complemented the beautiful colour of your house. Yeah, I'm really happy that they picked up on the different zones that we were trying to create. That was pretty much just the basis of our whole plan for the outside, so yeah, I'm glad they picked that up. I feel like very comfortable and very relaxed here and it does have a feeling of an oasis, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with all the landscaping because yes. um, it'll make a huge difference and if I anything, it'd be nice to see some maybe taller plantings and things like that to create even more privacy from that side. Overall, the space worked really well, was cleverly planned and they loved your play on materials and heights. And that was one impressive barbecue. <laughs> Well done. Eight. 1.5 behind the, these guys. So. I know what's coming next. Mark is going to ask them if they want to play their one point. Hmm. It's going to be played, I know it. You going to play your plus one? Yeah, yeah, we are. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> they are our friends, so we want to look out for each other. So when these situations come up, it's, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Damn you, Hayden. Why did you not do a better picture of me? It looked just like you. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Jamie and Hayden? Pretty nervous because we know that typically Jason scores us lower than Bernadette, so... I'm a little bit nervous. Is that why you've thought to play it? Were you thinking that detailed on that? We we're probably always going to play it. It's stupid if you don't. All right, bring it over. Oh, it <laughs> bring it over. This now belongs to me again. Here you go. I have to conjure up a fun <laughs> way of someone else winning it back. All right, guys, you guys are yet to win a room reveal too. All right, let's see what Jason did think. To be completely honest, I'm uh, not very confident. It's a little bit different to 
here because it's a wife in the house. To be honest, I think it's a little bit more intimate here. Overall, very well put together. It's such a lovely big outdoor room. This is as close a result as we have had on the block this year. The winners of Outdoor Entertaining Week. Well, I'll let you guys work it out. Yeah! yeah. Oh. We got it. Oh, I thought you guys got it. Oh, oh we got it. <laughs> we were so close yet so far. And it just sucks that Jason doesn't really support what we do, yet um, I know what we're doing is really going to add value to our house. I knew that would happen. According to the judges, yours was the best outdoor entertaining area, and yet you will not take home the $5,000 from AMP. Before we move on, um, yeah, it would be our first win. I don't hold a grudge against Kat and Jeremy, but uh, yeah, about three weeks ago, my granddad passed away. He was one of the first people I told about coming on the block. And because he was sick, he couldn't express how he was feeling. And uh, yeah, I haven't been the easiest guy to deal with the last couple of weeks. for him. <sighs> Should have been it. And so uh, the space, or our first win, what should have been, I'd like to dedicate to him. Oh, good on you. So sorry for being a grumpy guy last couple no. weeks. No, it's okay. My granddad took me in when, when my dad died when I was a boy. And um, he got real sick lately. And being here has meant that I can't be with him. Congratulations to Kat and Jeremy. Commiserations and condolences as well to Jamie and Hayden. But all up, guys, it's a really good effort. These areas do seriously add value to the house. We'll see you later. We don't deserve the win, they did. Mm. So, yeah, ugh. Just feels dumb. Mm, well done. To find out how you could win an amazing block prize pack thanks to AMP, head to amp.co.nz or talk to an advisor. AMP is getting behind the Block NZ Villa Wars. Tomorrow at 7.30. Hello, beautiful. Thanks. A new room. It's the missing piece of the puzzle. I'm really excited about this way. Has the teams under pressure? It's a feature that's right in the middle of our house. If it doesn't work out well, it's, it's going to be a really bad story. But with money tight. I'm trying to be a bit sneaky. We've got bills. I want to pay them today. They need to do whatever it takes to win. They've just earned themselves a solid uh, zero.